is up everybody golden yogi here and you are tuning into the channel with the golden perspective today once again we're going to dive into this week's edition of the on-chain newsletter by glassnote insights covering all this on-chain analysis super fun stuff and before we get into that i want to kindly invite you to subscribe down below if you have not already thank you to all those subscribers throughout the years who have been with me in and out of my hiatuses and we're back baby also, leave me a comment. Let me know what you think. Let me know about other stuff you'd like to see. Uh, anything is open, okay? Let's just keep the dialogue nice and clean and civil in our discourse. Also, uh, thumbs up, thumbs down. Let me know what you think through that signal and follow my uh, other uh, socials. Look at the links down in the description. There's a lot of cool things to follow me on and each social platform will be a different experience. So without further ado, let's get into it. Conviction through confluence. Now, after a month of consolidation around the $20,000 zone, Bitcoin prices have experienced a much awaited relief rally. Momentum in the short term is favorable, however, it remains weighted down by longer term macro indicators that time may be required to form a firm foundation. After a month of consolidation, Bitcoin prices experienced a long-awaited relief rally, closing 9% above the weekly open. Price action opened at 20,781 and rallied to a peak of 24,179, before pulling back towards the highs of the consolidation range over the weekend. In this edition, we will assess the sustainability of the current market rally through the following concepts. We're going to be assessing the price zones of interest from supply concentrations, technical and on-chain pricing models, then evaluate the market reaction to many metrics reaching statistically significant overcorrection, and then gauge the strength of the upwards movement by assessing confluence through momentum oscillators, the MRGO, and moving averages. This you can see in our, our two bands of time over this one week period in green hodler supply concentrations with the market valuation of bitcoin falling over 75 percent in 2022 speculators have been largely expelled from the network as discussed in the week of on-chain 27. during this process the redistribution of coins from lower conviction to stronger conviction uh, holders take place. This is a mechanism native to any market cycle where assets are transferred to more cost-intensive hodlers who invest longer-term time frames and allow their coins to mature into cold storage. We can observe this phenomena via the unspent realized price distribution, the URPD, as separ uh, separated by the short-term and long-term holder cohorts. Note that the short to long-term holder threshold, about 155 days, is back in mid-February when the prices were trading around $40,000. The $20,000 range has attracted a large cluster of short-term holder coin volume. This is a uh, result of a sorry. This is a result of a significant transfer of ownership from capitulating sellers to new and more optimistic buyers. Short-term holder demand nodes can also be seen at the psychological price level of $40,000, $30,000 and $20,000. Notably, much of this supply, including the long-term holder supply above, has not capitulated despite prices trading more than 50% below their acquisition level. This is likely indicative of ownership by relatively price-sensitive, insensitive buyers. Meaning, they can handle the fluctuations and not care. It would be constructive to see the short-term holder held coins at the $40,000 to $50,000 range uh, level start to mature status over coming weeks, helping to bolster this argument. As you can see here, as it's pointing out, got a big amount at the $20,000 range. Okay, moving on. Looking at the URPD by cohort age, we can observe the distribution of the Bitcoin supply by time since the coins were last transacted. There are two fundamental points to take away. 
Elevated demand can similarly be noted around $20,000. And uh, we I'll start that again. Elevated demand can similarly be noted around the $20,000 region with a vast amount of recent transaction occurring in the zone. This area also contains the second and fourth largest URPD nodes, around 900,000 BTC, further indicating there was a large transfer of ownership within the zone. Maturity can be seen to decline from the all-time high to current market value, reflective of the duration of the prevailing downtrend. Market vol or market. Large volumes of coins accumulated over six months ago, which are holding heavy unrealized losses, appear unwilling to sell. Both URPD formats present a case that an increasingly large proportion of supply is held by hodlers who are allowing coins to mature despite holding the losses. Their demand inflows have centered around the psychological $20,000, $30,000, and $40,000 consolidation zones. However, it is important to note that during this process, many long-term holders have contributed to the sell side, and the URPD charts essentially represent the post-dust settling condition to date. Furthermore, it is possible that these supply concentration nodes may act as firm resistance when the market attempts to recover higher. Rebounding off an overextension. Prices have responded positively this week, breaking above the recent consolidation zone. This comes off the back of what may be considered a significant short-term overcorrection, with many metrics reaching extreme statistical deviations. This was driven heavily by a period of rapid deleveraging across the market, with many lenders, investors, and trading firms seeing uh, collateral liquidation, either by discretion or as for sellers as seen in the past two uh, week on chains, falling dominoes, capitulation across the board, and minor incomes under stress. <clears throat> Next, we have the Mayer multiple, which can be used to assess deviations between spot prices and the 200 day moving average. The 200 day moving average is widely used within traditional technical analysis as a tool to distinguish between two, uh, between macro bull and bear trends. At the most extreme during this price correction, the Mayer multiple had reached below 0.55, signaling the market was trading at 45% discount to the 25-day moving average. Such events are extremely uncommon and only account for 127 closes out of 4,186 days, a total of 3% of the trading history. You can see that in this chart here, that in these two uh, these circular zones, or no, that's just the COVID event. But with the Manila line going all the way down to the bottom are the points in which this has occurred. And the most recent one has occurred more than other times. Longer, that is. The MVRV metric is another powerful tool to assess these deviations between sprout pricing and the aggregate market cost basis. With BTC prices breaking above the realized price this week, pushing the wider market back into aggregate profit, short-term outlook has shifted upwards with participants eager for any form of relief rally. Bitcoin as an asset is constantly maturing. In recent years, it has garnered interest on both institutional and national levels. Therefore, to account for dynamic economical climates, a four-year rolling Z-score is used to normalize the data while also capturing the common halving cycle. Standard deviations below negative one have a strong history of helping to identify uh, bottom formation. Thus far, it has signaled undervaluation for all bear cycle bottoms, including the 2015, 2018, and the March 2020 flash crash. The June leg down in price action has produced the lowest four year rolling Z-score value on record today, suggesting a statistically extreme deviation was reached adding fuel to the present upwards relief rally. More interesting points. <clears throat> we can now introduce the concept of coin days destroyed, CDD, which we use as a gauge for periods where relatively old or young coins are dominating the spending behavior. For each day a coin remains unspent, it accumulates one coin day equal to its BTC volume. 
When that coin is spent, it's considered to destroy that accumulated time, producing the CDD model. This tool effectively captures the time-weighted economic value of coins that are on the move each day. Here, we compare whether the monthly average CDD value is higher or lower than the yearly average. Blue zones in the chart below show periods where recent expenditure of old coins is exceeding the yearly average. This is typical of bull markets, profit taking, but also capitulation events in bear markets, panic selling, and uh, capital preservation. From this, we can deduce that longer term investors with older coins have accelerated their spending of more mature UXTOs as prices traded down into the lows. <clears throat> The MVRV Z score in blue can then be used in combination with the coin days destroyed CDD oscillator in orange. This produces a model which observes both aggregate profitability, the MVRV, and the coin age demographics dominating actualized spending behaviors. Elevated CDD oscillator values above one while the market is in aggregate loss, meaning the MVRV is below one, generally coincides with, capit with capitulation periods. Elevated CDD oscillator values above one, uh, while the market is in aggregate profit, MVRV above one usually coincides with topping structures. What this model signals is when longer term investors are both spending a larger portion of coins at the same time as the market is on aggregate underwater of their positions, what we can see is that longer term investors have likely experienced an uh, appreciable degree of capitulation between May and July. <clears throat> we can now formalize this observation by inspecting the actual spending behavior of long-term holders. Long-term holders are often considered synonymous with hodler class and represent participants of statistically higher conviction. In the chart below, we compare the profitability of their more recent monthly spending and their yearly average. When monthly profitability exceeds yearly profitability, the market is entering overheated conditions as long-term holders are spending more and taking increasingly large profits. When monthly profitability is less than uh, yearly profitability, it generally suggests extended bear market momentum is in effect and losses are being locked by the long-term holder cohort. So you can see here, uh, we are in the second to largest stretch of poor long-term holder profitability, which tells me it's got to flip soon. In the current market, long-term holders, holders have seen their recent profitability drift significantly below their yearly performance. For almost 400 consecutive days, the decline has reached similar duration and depth to the 2018 bear market lows and provides added weight to the arguments made above. With such severe statistical deviations from the mean punctuated with unprecedented forced selling from crypto native institutions across the board, a wave of relief was of high probability. In the next section, we will assess the conditions required for continuation of the current upwards momentum, as well as conditions that would lead to rejection. <clears throat> Resistance to recovery. With price action now experiencing its first relief rally since April, we can assess various models which have provided overhead resistance in previous bear cycles. We can compare resistance levels between both a macro technical viewpoint and then seek confluence with the suite of on chain models. The following simple moving averages have displayed relevance for Bitcoin price action throughout time. We got the 200 weekly moving average, which is currently at around 22K and has historically been an indicator for bottoming formation. The 111 day moving average, which is a component of a Pi cycle top indicator and currently resides at $30,000, aligning with the psychological price level and with supply concentrations detailed above. Then there's the 200 day moving average is trading at $35,000 and remains at a, uh, a key transitional boundary between macro bull and bear market momentum. <clears throat> Here we can see all three of those on the chart. We just got over the 200 weekly moving average. And the suggestion is we got to get through these other ones to start to recapture 
all the sentiment. <clears throat> Next, the on-chain cost basis of short-term holders, long-term holders, and finally, the aggregate market cost basis can be used to assess relative price action strength. We can also consider the realized price to liveliness ratio, the RPLR, which aims to describe a sort of hodler implied fair value. Price has recorded a breakout above both the realized price and the long-term holder realized price, which are each trading at 22,000. The channel between the two is a contested point of interest providing confluence with the 200-day weekly moving average. The short-term holder uh, STH cost basis is currently trading at 28,500 and is in a strong downtrend. This is a product of two mechanisms, short-term holders, short holders realize losses, lowering their average cost basis, and the transfer of coin wealth to a new cohort of short-term holders buying closer or below the current spot price. The RPLR is trading at 35,800 which provides confluence with the 200-day moving average Given the wide view on the 200-day moving average and the implied value imparted by the hodlers in the LPLR, these models make for a structural level worth keeping an eye on. <clears throat> an interesting interaction to observe is when the cost basis for long-term holder cohort trades above the aggregate cost basis for the wider market, the realized price. For the long-term holder RP to increase, long-term holders must either buy coins above their coin cost basis, or coins with a higher cost basis must mature past the 150-day threshold. In a bear market, this is often a high bar and rarely happens. Instead, the realized price generally climbs as a result of profits being realized. As the market bottoms, strengthens, and sufficient demand flows into absorb profit-taking, the realized price can climb above the long-term holder realized price. The duration of previous bear market low divergences has ranged between 248 days and 575 days. In the current cycle, it has only been in effect for 17 days in comparatively short duration. Okay, interesting. <clears throat> So far, that's the only option that has not been confluence of bottoming, the way I understand it. Confluence in momentum. The market realized gradient oscillator is a statistically normalized oscillator designed to measure the relative change in momentum between speculative value and true organic capital for inflows. It does this by comparing the rate of change between the market price and the realized price. Positive values indicate constructive upward momentum over the considered period. Negative values indicate bearish momentum over the considered period, and breaks above or below one indicate a changing momentum to the upside or downside respectively. Here, we assess that for confluence between 14, 28, and 140 day variance of the oscillator to identify connection across multiple time frames. Starting with the 14-day MRGO, a positive breakout can be seen producing structural higher highs indicating increasing momentum. The 14-day oscillator is particularly sensitive due to its bi-weekly period and thus a more responsive but noisier variant. Further continuation of this pattern to the upside would signify short-term relief is a probability. Rejection from the positive regions would indicate a deterioration in short-term momentum. Go, a little positive breakout on that 14 day MRGO. <clears throat> First time it did it, it failed. But now it, it's, uh, it came down, tested it, and, and back up. So let's move on. Now the 28 day MRGO is similarly producing higher highs, suggesting that downside momentum is slowing over the long term. It is currently signaling modest upside momentum is in effect. However, as seen immediately prior to the June sell-off, the previous attempt at upside momentum failed to achieve escape velocity and was followed by a violent collapse in price. Thus, the market momentum relative to measurable capital inflows is at a crossroads in the short term. Right there, it failed. But this is the one that we're interested in right in the center in orange. 
see how we do. Then there's the 140 day MRGO. Is a much longer time frame momentum oscillator unlike the previously discussed variants the 140 day is less sensitive to short-term price volatility and thus represents a proxy for long duration momentum and macro trends the 140 day mrgo has seen persistently lower peaks since march of 2021 and has not recorded a positive value in 2022 <clears throat> this highlights a macro bearish mar uh, market dynamic has likely been in effect for the last 15 months. <clears throat> the current extended negative value regime is indicative of persistently negative price performance in 2022 and remains in the favor of the bears at this stage. The underlying trend continues to slowly grind higher, indicating a potential longer term recovery is in effect. However, suggests additional duration and recovery time may be required. If you view through the lens of the 140 day MRGO, the sell off back in May 2021 remains the most severe momentum shift in this cycle. However, as discussed in A Bear of Historic Proportions, the recent sell offs in May from Luna and June of 2022 can be considered some of the largest on record. This indicates, on a macro scale, the degree of downside market momentum is diminishing over time, potentially signaling a degree of seller exhaustion. A stabilization, stabilization is on the horizon. For that whole reason, the whole region, no positive values. Can we get a flip? Let's conclude. With so little price relief year to date, profitability has been poor for all investor classes. The long-term holder cohort is no exception, and their spending patterns suggest a non-trivial flush-out has occurred between May to June of 2022. However, long-term supply dynamics continue to improve and redistribution takes place, gradually moving coins towards the hodlers. Notably, notable supply concentrations are observable at $20,000, $30,000, and $40,000 ranges, which tend to align with both technical and on-chain price models making these regions significant zones of interest. Momentum in the short term suggests continuation of the upswing provided the realized price and long term holder realized price can hold as a support level. On the long term, momentum suggests the worst of the capitulation could be over. However, a longer recovery time may be required as foundational repair continues. What do you think? I really want to know. Leave me a comment. I am happy to hear any suggestions on this topic and personally if you want to know what I think I'm 75 to 85 percent sure that the bottom is in now that doesn't mean that we can't go back and revisit one of these things but a 10 11 even a 14,000 I think is out of the question and we'll see about these bears if they try and hold out and get that for their sake. I hope they're scooping up some at these levels and uh, anything that drops below them. So I love you all. Have a beautiful afternoon or morning or evening, wherever you are in the world. And I'll see you on the next one. Peace.